Hello and welcome to this video, the second in the Pullback of One Form series. Now, this, this video will tend to just focus mainly on some examples after first covering a couple of extra concepts. So the Pullback of One Forms is an essential concept in differential geometry, particularly when working with smooth manifolds. A one form is a covariant object that acts on tangent vectors, which are vectors on a manifold, and produces real numbers. The pullback operation allows us to transport one forms between manifolds in a way that is consistent with the underlying smooth structure. All right. So just briefly, let's just a couple of uh, concepts involving manifolds and cotangent spaces. So. Uh, first one, let's just remind ourselves the manifold M is a space that locally resembles Euclidean space. A smooth function on M is a map from M to the real numbers R that is infinitely differentiable. <clears throat> the cotangent space T upper asterisk P M or the dual space to the tangent space T P M. Okay, so the cotangent space is the dual space to the tangent space. Okay, so this is the dual space, this cotangent space to the manifold M at the point P here is the dual space to the tangent space to the manifold at the point P. All right. In simple terms, if the tangent space contains vectors, the cotangent space contains linear functionals, which are maps that take vectors from the tangent space and return real numbers. So the one form here takes the vector here and acts on it to produce a real number. Okay, so broadly the whole setup again, uh, same as over the last few videos, um, is we have a manifold M and a manifold N. We have a smooth map between them, which takes points on M to points on N. We're at a particular point on M, point P here. We have a vector which exists in the tangent space of the manifold M at the point P, and under the map f from m to n we have a corresponding point f of p over here and this these tangent spaces induce a map from that takes pushes forward the vector v to here f lower asterisk at p of v is the vector that is pushed forward from here under this mapping which involves the jacobian of f acting on the vector v at the point p and so at each one of these points where a tangent vector or tangent vectors exist, this map pushes those tangent vectors, this map here, pushes them forward to here. So, and then the corresponding question that we dealt with in the last video, starting in the last video, is um, in the cotangent or dual space here, could we take the one form existing here and pull it back to find its corresponding one form over here? And that's what we found that we could, okay? So that was the point of this video, uh, the previous video, and this one. Let's go on. All right, better hide that. All right, so one form omega on M is a smooth section of the cotangent bundle, T upper asterisk M, which means that omega assigns to each point in M a linear functional on the tangent space of that point. And when we talk about the cotangent bundle, T star M, we're not particular point here, we're talking about all of the cotangent spaces. So the cotangent bundle T asterisk M is a collection of all cotangent spaces at every point of the manifold. In the last video, we were just particularly picking a particular point F of P and P. Right. So I'm just generalizing the definition by introducing the word bundle. So a section of the cotangent bundle is a smooth choice of a linear functional at every point on the manifold. Specifically, a one form omega is a smooth section of the cotangent bundle. This means that for each point P belongs to M, omega at P is an element of the cotangent space to M at the point P, and it's a cotangent because the upper asterisk here indicates that, and omega P at the point P is smooth in how it varies across M. A linear functional lambda, just a reminder here, is a function that takes a vector V that belongs to the tangent space of manifold M at P and returns a real number, lambda of V. Remember, one forms act on vectors and produce real numbers. All right, just uh, properties, they satisfy the property of linearity. So lambda A times V is a vector plus B times W, W is a vector, is expanding that out, is A times lambda of V plus, or distributing the function, linear functional across the vectors, A times lambda of V plus B times lambda of uh, w, okay, just pulling out the constants a and b. For any vectors, V, W belongs to the tangent space M at the point P and scalars A, B. 
right. Now, a one-form omega on M is a smooth assignment of a linear functional at every point P belongs to M. All right. So just generalizing the notion of P here, it could be any point. This means that for each point P, omega defines a functional omega of P belongs to the cotangent space, the upper asterisk indicating that at the point P, that can act on any vector V belongs, that is an element of the tangent space to the manifold M of the point P, and give a real number omega P acting on V. So omega P acting on V gives a real number, and the real number is this. Okay, so we have our two manifolds here. Uh, as I've already pointed out, we have a map F from M to N. We have the push forward of a vector V in this tangent space here to this tangent space. And correspondingly, we have in the cotangent space to the point F of P, we have a one form here. And we want to know, can we pull that one back to here? What is its form over here uh, in this cotangent space to the manifold M at the point P? All right. All right, so let's, uh, before we get into some examples, just remind ourselves, in, let's go to local coordinates now. In local coordinates, the map F that maps M to N is given by a set of smooth functions, F of X, F1, function of X1 to XM, F2, Fn, N depending on the dimensions there, where um, uh, M depending on the dimension, sorry, uh, where X1, X2, XM are local coordinates on M and F are the co coordinate components of F. Okay, let omega be omega j, dzj, just as so we did in the last video, be a one form on n, where z1, z2, zm are local coordinates on n. Now the pullback of omega via f, the map f, is f upper asterisk star, this is a pullback, push forward, that's a lower star down the bottom, the pullback is the upper star, acting on omega is omega j at the point f of p, okay, and then we have here, this is the push forward part, um, Remember, so omega acting on the push forward, the vector that was pushed forward from P, where partial FJ on partial XI is the Jacobian matrix of F and DXI are the coordinate one forms on M. All right, so an example now. Let's have a look at an example where our manifold M is a two-dimensional Euclidean space and N is also two-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, we have a smooth map F from R2 to R2. And it's given by f of x, y, so x, y coordinates on m, uh, component functions f1, f2, functions of x and y, x, and gives us x squared minus y squared for the first component function, and for the second component function, 2x, y. Now, on the manifold n, they have coordinates z1 and z2. All right. This takes a point x, y, and m and maps it to a point z1, z2 in n, where z1 is this, z2 is this. All right. Okay, now let's say we also have a one form omega is C dz1 plus B dz2 on R2, where C and B are constants. Okay, and uh, in the last video, I just looked at an example where omega was just dz2. Now I'm just going to generalize it a bit more, and we're going to have a constant C times dz1 plus constant B times the one form dz2. On R2. Now the goal is to compute the pullback of this one form via the map F denoted by F upper asterisk omega. All right, so here's our rule for the pullback. F star omega is omega j F of P. So it's the one form evaluated on the cotangent space to the manifold N. So that is evaluated here. So here's where our one form is. We want to pull it back to here. What is its form over here? Well, we're told its form over here in the cotangent space of the manifold M at the point P is this object here. Okay, so our one form at F of P over here is omega, omega 1 F of P dz1, omega 2 F of P dz2 is C times dz1 plus B times dz2, C and B are constants, okay? So let's take this and work it step by step. So we have omega upper, uh, sorry, F upper, uh, asterisk omega, so the pullback of omega under F is this, and we expand that out, omega 1, partial F1, partial Xi, DXI pl uh, plus omega 2 at F of P again here, partial F2, partial Xi, DXI is C times partial F1, partial Xi, DX1, uh, DXI, sorry, we're going to expand these I's, so there's going to be one uh, 
I will go from one to two in two dimensions. Uh, B times partial F2, the second component function, and then expanded again over I as one to two. All right, so we need to fill those out. All right, so from earlier, F1 was X squared minus Y squared, F2 was two XY, so we have, quoting that formula again, we have now expanded out C times, and we have F1 with different uh, partial derivative of F1 with respect to X, partial derivative of F1 with respect to Y, and then over here, same thing again, partial derivative, but this time with F2 with respect to X and F2 with respect to Y. Okay, so we're, get, we're going to need in the first box here, C times the partial derivative with respect to X of X squared minus Y squared, similarly, partial derivative with respect to Y of that, and then over here, B times, partial derivative of x, uh, with respect to x, sorry, of 2xy, and the partial derivative with respect to y of 2xy. Okay, when we do that, we're going to end up here with 2cx dx, so 2x times c dx, uh, minus, um, over here, we're going to end up with this minus 2cy, because the partial derivative of this with respect to y is minus 2y dy, multiplied by constant c here, so we end up with this. Then over here, partial derivative of this with respect to x is 2y uh, times a constant b, so dx, and then partial derivative of this with respect to y is 2x dy, 2x dy times the scalar b, we get that. So we end up with 2 times cx plus by dx plus 2 times bx minus cy dy. Okay, and that is our one form on M. So we took our other one form, which was uh, C times DZ1 plus B times DZ2, and we pulled, uh, that was on N, that was our one form on N, and we pulled it back to M, and this is its form on M. So the pullback of omega via F is F star omega is this object. All right, and let's have a look at another example. Let's get consider an example where, again, M is R2, two-dimensional Euclidean space, N is R2, and the smooth map F from R2 to R2. F of XY is um, X plus Y, X minus Y is equal to Z1, Z2. All right, so our component functions, X plus Y, and the other second component function, X minus Y. Okay, so this map takes a point X, Y, and M and maps it to a point Z1, Z2 in N, where Z1 is X plus Y, Z2 is X minus Y. And thank you to the map F for that. Now let's say we're also given a one form omega is Z squared, uh, Z2, sorry, not Z squared, my apologies, my apologies. Z2, the second coordinate here, times DZ1, plus Z1, this coordinate here, times DZ2, right? So DZ1 is a one form with respect to this coordinate here, and uh, DZ2 is a one form with respect to this coordinate here on N. Now the goal is to compute the pullback of this one form omega via the map F, denote F star omega. All right, so repeating that rule we used before. Okay, so our one form at F of P is omega, because remember you're evaluating at F of P on the manifold N, you find its form there, then you pull it back, all right, to the first manifold M. So omega is omega 1 f of p dz1 plus omega 2 f of p dz2 is z2 times dz1 plus z1 times dz2. So it tells you omega 1 then at f of p is z2, omega 2 at f of p is z1, all right? So putting that information in here, because here's our rule again, here we are, it's this, 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 gives us that. So we're just writing out that we're just restating this in relation to this rule here. So we have omega 1, omega 2, and we have this, this bit here. Then we have to expand these total differential uh, with respect to X and Y. So I goes from one to two, okay, do that. Okay, so for earlier Z1 was X plus Y, Z2 was X minus Y. So writing it all out again, here we go. So we have Z1 times that, plus sorry, Z2 times that, my apologies, plus Z1 times that. Okay, so Z2 times partial with respect to X of X plus Y, partial with respect to Y of this, um, so on over here, likewise. And when we do that partial with respect to X, well, we just get the derivative of this is one, partial derivative of this is one times DX, 
So we've got dx, and partial of this with respect to y is just 1 times dy. Over here, partial with respect to x of this is just dx, so that's 1 times dx. Partial of this with respect to y is minus uh, 1 times dy, so we get this. Now, z2, if you remember, is x minus y, and z1 here is x plus y, so we put those out front. Then expand this out and collect terms, and we'll end up with 2x dx minus 2y dy, uh, dx, sorry, 2y dx. So the pullback of omega via f is f up a asterisk omega is 2x dx minus 2y dy. So our on the cotangent space to n at the point f of p, our one form was omega is z2 times dz1 plus uh, z1 times dz2. So that's its form in the cotangent space to the manifold n at the point f of p. Now, pulling it back to the cotangent space at m, right, at the point p, is this object here. Now, so what we did is, in all both these examples, we took our one form here in this cotangent space to n, and we pulled it back under the map f to this cotangent space at m. And that was the whole point of this video. All right, I think, I think, it's, have I finished there? Is that the last of it? Yeah, that was. All right, so um, we've got the push forward from here in the first five videos uh, prior to this one and the last one. And then we have in this video and the last video, this pullback from here to here. So push forward and pull back. Push forward here, pull back here. And for the pullback, we use this rule here. Now it will turn out when we go to two forms, we'll be able to use this on each of the one forms. And you'll see that in the next video. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and helpful. I hope um, it's clear to you. Um, and if you like it, please um, hit the like button and please also subscribe too as well. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video then.